good morning to everyone and i am dr ramesh kumar on behalf of svr ias academy and in this current affairs video lecture you will learn so many important areas today's date is september 23rd 2016 let's start the video lecture and we hope you enjoy this video lecture now let's discuss about brics nations and its importance brics stands for five emerging countries they are brazil russia india china and south africa if you take these countries from the continental perspective three countries from asia one country is from africa and other country is from south american continent no country is from north america and european continent recently our finance minister has called for a formal mechanism for a formal mechanism within brics nations to share and exchange the experience on the infrastructure development for developing countries infrastructure development is the top priority because infrastructure is the key to the growth of an economy this formal mechanism can act as a regional knowledge hub for the developing countries with the exchange of information that can be facilitated through cloud sharing and other electronic methods investment is required for the infrastructure financing that investment may come from the public and private sectors india needs investment especially in various sectors like health education sanitation renewable energy highways port and railways for that government of india has taken many steps like setting up of national investment and infrastructure fund national investment and infrastructure fund we advise you to prepare thoroughly on this national infrastructure and investment fund upsc ask already asked prelims questions on this topic to get the video lecture on this topic visit our website comeonindia.com in 2015 in the december month government of india has set up 40000 crore rupees national infrastructure and investment fund to fund the commercially viable greenfield brownfield and stalled projects greenfield and brownfield projects itself it is an important area for the ias examination so what are the difference between greenfield project and brownfield project to get the video lecture on this topic visit our website comeonindia.com and also prepare thoroughly on the brics whether brics has lost its relevance or what are all the achievements of brics as an forum after establishment it can be asked in the mains 2016 and 2017 ias examination now let's discuss another important area for ias examination about ease of doing business here we are not going to discuss about ease of doing business index that was created by world bank group to get a video lecture on the ease of doing business index visit our website comeonindia.com here central government through its ministry of commerce and industry has created a mechanism to rank states 
based on the steps taken by them to words ease of doing business central government has taken so many initiatives for the ease of doing business in india one of the initiative is to rank the states based on business reforms action plan business reforms action plan under it various reform areas are chosen so under this plan various reform areas are chosen and states should implement 75% or more of these areas so the state governments should implement 75% or more of the 340 areas for reform in this business reforms action plan first rank goes to uttarakhand then followed by rajasthan jharkhand and other states totally there are 12 states the 12 states have the implementation percentage of 75 percentage and above it is monitored by department of industrial policy and promotion so it is monitored by department of industrial policy and promotion it is functioning under ministry of commerce and industry already we discussed there are seven there are 340 reform areas the important areas like construction permit environmental norms labor norms obtaining the electricity connection online tax return filing inspection norms access to the information and transparency single window mechanism land availability and commercial dispute resolution so these are the common areas whenever you write an answer in the mains examination on the questions like ease of doing business investments how to attract investment and what are all the steps we need to take means you can quote these areas what we mentioned so prepare thoroughly on this topic it is one of the highly expected area for gs paper 3 now let's discuss about monetary policy committee if you are reading the newspaper for last 1 to 1 and 1/2 years we might be seeing the word monetary policy committee on the regular basis today also there's a news that government of india appointed three external appointees to the monetary policy committee in this background let's discuss the topic in detail before the formation of monetary policy committee interest rates are fixed by rbi governor so it is a discretion of the rbi governor to fix the interest rates based on the inflation after we move to the inflation targeting inflation targeting means inflation has taken as a range from 2% to 6% range so inflation targeting range is 2% to 6% so remember this because it can be austrian upsc banking in other examinations apart from that 
consumer price index will be taken for calculating the inflation not the wholesale price index so remember it is the consumer price index which will be taken up for calculating the inflation so it is a main responsibility of the monetary policy committee to keep the inflation within the range that is 2% to 6% range so targeting the inflation within this range is called as inflation targeting monetary policy committee will have six members three members will belong to rbi and three members will be called as external members will be appointed by government of india so recently government of india appointed three external members to the monetary policy committee names of these members will be important for examination because the monetary policy committee is going to revolutionize monetary policy formulation in india so you need to know the names of six members from the rbi side there will be three members including rbi governor at present the rbi governor is urjit patel and second rbi member is deputy governor or gandhi and third rbi member is md patra is a executive director from the ex government side three external members are appointed they will have a fixed four years term it is an important exam point external members will have four years term but it is a fixed term remember they have fixed four years term and the term cannot be renewed the term cannot be renewed is another point so to get the complete video lecture on the monetary policy committee and its functioning and importance visit our website comonindia.com now let's discuss about another important area for 2017 ias examination is the recently union cabinet approved a proposal for laying the submarine optical fiber cable to laying the submarine optical fiber cable between mainland of india and andaman nicobar islands at present andaman and nicobar islands is connected to the indian mainland through satellite so the satellite is the only medium of providing the telecom connectivity between mainland and andaman and nicobar islands but providing the telecom connection through satellites is very costly and the availability is also limited so to remove the shortcomings recently union government has approved a proposal for improving the telecom connectivity between andaman and nicobar islands and with the mainland by laying the submarine optical fiber cable the cost will be around 1100 crore rupees according to the plan submarine optical fiber cable will connect chennai and five places in andaman and nicobar islands the five places are the capital that is port blair and five other islands like little andaman 
கார் நிக்கோபார் ஹேவ்லாக் கமோர்தா அண்ட் கிரேட் நிக்கோபார் த கனெக்டிவிட்டி ஹேஸ் லாட் ஆஃப் அட்வான்டேஜஸ் இட் வில் இம்ப்ரூவ் த சோசியோ எக்கனாமிக் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் தீஸ் ஐலாண்ட்ஸ் so it will result in the socio economic development of these islands and implementation of the submarine optical fiber cable will allow the implementation of e governance initiatives e commerce facilities and it will provide support to the educational institutions for knowledge sharing and enhancing the job opportunities and so on so this topic is important for prelims and mains examination so prepare well now let's discuss some important topics that are coming in the news regularly in the third week of the september 2016 we advise you to prepare thoroughly on capital account current account from the static economic portion visit our website comeonindia.com to watch a video lecture on this topic and there are also another topic that is coming in the news is about currency appreciation and currency depreciation against dollar indian rupee is depreciating sometimes and appreciating sometimes so in this background from the static portion of economy you must know the implications of currency appreciation and currency depreciation both the topics are very very important for prelims 2017 examination the chances are high to get one question from these areas first let's take the current account deficit as a topic in the first quarter of 2016-17 financial year first quarter means april may and june you might be knowing about the financial year it starts from april and ends in march 31st so the first quarter of the financial year means it includes 3 months that is april may and june in this first quarter of this financial year india's current account deficit narrowed to 300 million us dollars so india's current account deficit for the first quarter of this financial year was 300 million us dollar when you compare the same quarter in 2015 16 financial year india's current account deficit was 6.1 billion us dollar 6.1 billion us dollar so the current account deficit shrank to 0.1% of gdp in 2015-16 first quarter the current account deficit was 1.2% of gdp whereas in the 2016-17 financial year the first quarter current account deficit was 0.1 percentage of the gdp current account deficit means we are importing more than what we are exporting current account deficit is decreasing means it may be due to our increasing exports or due to decreasing imports in the first quarter of this financial year our imports started declining that is one of the major reason for low current account deficit in the first quarter of this financial year 
So prepare thoroughly on what is current account, what is current account deficit and what is current account surplus and also prepare thoroughly on capital account as well. Now let's discuss to the second topic that is currency appreciation and depreciation or, or we can say strengthening of the ruby and weakening of the ruby. Recently Indian ruby gained strength against US dollar. There are various reasons for that. Recently our current account deficit narrowed sharply to just 300 million US dollars or you can say 0.1 percentage of the GDP. That's also one of the important reason and second reason for ruby strengthening is low trade deficit lower trade deficit because of the decreased import level. A low current account deficit is always favorable because of the low current account deficit it will provide stability to the ruby. So remember it is an important prelims point low current account deficit means it provides stability to the Indian ruby. There was a term coming in the news that is green back. Have you heard about green back? Whenever you turn economy section of the newspaper, any newspaper you can come across the term green back. That is nothing but it is a slang term for US paper dollars. So simply green back means it indicates US dollars. It was issued in the 18th century and the paper note was in green color. So that's why it is called as green back. So it's a slang term for US paper dollars. There's also another term that is coming in the news regularly is about negative interest rate. Negative interest rate and its importance or implications. It is coming in the context of Japan economy. So prepare thoroughly on the negative interest rate and it can be asked in the prelims examination. Now let's discuss about another topic that is important for the IAS 2017 examination is about JH BDBL project. It stands for Jagdishpur, Haldia and Bokaro Dambra gas pipeline. So the project is nothing but Jagdishpur, Haldia and Bokaro Dambra gas pipeline project. There are so many important exam points are there. The first point is that it is going to be implemented by the company called Gale. Gale stands for Gas Authority of India Limited. So Gale stands for Gas Authority of India Limited and it is the Maharatna company. So it was given Maharatna status by government of India. So prepare thoroughly on the Maharatna, Navratna and Miniratna companies and their operational freedoms and criteria to declare companies as a Maharatna and Navratna companies. To get a video lecture on this topic visit our website comeonindia.com. Another exam point is that recently cabinet committee on economic affairs has approved viability gap funding 
has approved the viability gap funding of 5100 crore rupees for this project the total cost of the project is more than 12000 crore rupees out of that 40 percentage of the project cost that is nearly 5000 crore rupees will come from government of india under viability gap funding model we have covered a video lecture on the viability gap funding model it is an important area for the prelims examination from the economy static portion so prepare thoroughly on the public private partnership model and viability gap funding model now let's discuss the various benefits of this gas pipeline project the pipeline will ensure the availability of clean and eco friendly fuel to the industrial commercial areas and domestic areas in the states of uttar pradesh bihar jharkhand odisha and west bengal so totally five states are covered in the map you can see the pipeline goes through uttar pradesh bihar odisha west bengal and jharkhand once the project is completed it will ensure the steady supply of eco friendly fuel at the affordable prices to the industries so industries will be encouraged to set up their units in these states so these states will get higher economic growth another exam point is that the pipeline project goes through the korakpur sindri and baruni so the project goes through korakpur sindri and baruni where defunct fertilizer units are located in these three areas fertilizer units owned by government of india are located but they have become dysfunctional because of the huge losses now the gas pipeline will supply cheaper gas to the these fertilizer units then fertilizer units can be revived recently government of india has given indications to revive these fertilizer units for that a special purpose vehicle a special purpose vehicle has been launched the special purpose vehicle includes four government companies they are national thermal power corporation coal india limited indian oil corporation and fertilizer corporation of india so these four companies formed a special purpose vehicle to revive the three fertilizer units which are located in gorakhpur sindri and barni so prepare thoroughly on this topic and we hope you enjoyed our today's video lecture and in this video lecture we discussed so many points as you may be knowing that we have launched our ias 2017 online video lectures batch one week back and if you are interested to join our online video lectures visit our website comeonindia.com where visit to the ias 2017 batch 1 where you get all the details about our batch we have given video explanation about our course and every day we will provide plan of action what are the topics that we are going to cover on the same day we will given the pdf format and if you have any doubt you can email us our email id is upsc@comeonindia.com and if you have any doubt you can also send a, your sms via whatsapp 
and our whatsapp number is 8098099922 so keep in touch with us we are ready to help you to prepare nicely for the ias 2017 examination and all the best